Okay, good, uh, good afternoon. So my name is uh, Eulalia Nuala, and I work as associate professor at uh, the Department of Economics and Business of the University Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona, Spain. And my field of interest is uh, probability, uh, more particular uh, stochastic differential equations and stochastic partial differential equations. Good afternoon, my name is Vasily Kalakaitsov. I am Russian. I am working for the moment as a professor in the University of Warwick. I also keep strong relations with the High Institution of Russia, where I take part in some joint project. And for example, there is now in the High School of Economics, there is exactly, exactly project on the fractional differential equations. So exactly on the topic um, of the program. And I'm taking part in this project, uh, which is funded by mm, the Russian Foundation. My major interests are also in probability and analysis. And in fact, this link probability and analysis is somehow lying in the heart of this uh, whole fractional calculus, calculus activity. Modeling differential equations of fractional order has been recently taken a lot of attention in the different disciplines, in pure, uh, including pure and applied mathematics, also financial engineering and natural science. So um, they, are, they, they are tools that are more conventional, and, but uh, there are new tools that are needed to solve these uh, differential equations. So the program sets us to investigate the multiple facets of space-time fractional dynamics. So, uh, from a point of view of mathematics, it involves solving uh, integral differential equations and uh, that come from the theory of partial differential equations. And, uh, and then from an application point of view, they have also a lot of uh, applications in, um, in natural science and engineering. So we also uh, look to exploit the empirical part of these equations. And uh, so, the, in, so to conclude, the program would like to contribute on the significant progress and description and understanding of uh, fractional differential equations. So people really, you know, when in the history, first the people started talking about integer numbers. And then at some point they realized that they cannot cover everything and they uh, developed these fractional numbers, which was more or less straightforward thing. But next fractional appears when we talk about powers. Yeah, so you take two in power three in power four in power five, it's clear what to do. We just multiply it several times. But then we pose the next question what will be two, say, in power one half? The question is much more complicated, of course. And it turns out, with some of you who, uh, people who remember that from school, that two in power one half is actually square root of two. Now, what we're thinking about here is about similar thing when we're talking about powers, but not of numbers, but certain operations, namely these operations of taking integration and taking differentiation. We're interested in the fractional power of these operators, which is of course much more complicated story. Historically, I think useful um, saying that it was about 150 years ago that the classical people of, of analysis, Riemann and Liouville started this development. But uh, this uh, somehow development was in a sleeping mode because at that time it was not much clear where one can apply these things. And this is really remarkable development of the last 50 years that this uh, story started flourishing precisely because uh, we found, we found, well, the scientists found it, that the models uh, described by this fractional differential equation are actually everywhere. And as Eulalia pointed out in biology and physics everywhere, in, in sociology and finances, in every, every, everywhere. And also um, another point which I'd like to stress about this fractional thing is the connection with the um, classical diffusion. Yeah, we're talking about fractional diffusion. Classical diffusion was initiated by Einstein. Well, the mathematical theory of diffusion initiated by Einstein in his famous paper 1905, where he describes the Brownian motion discovered by the famous Brown yeah, in terms of um, diffusion equation. And the whole mark of this equation was that if you deviate the deviation of a particle from its position in time t, is proportional to the square root of time. So this is this whole mark of classical diffusion. Square root of, ti square root of time is the displacement in time t. 
And this describes really quite a lot of problems, but later on it was realized and it was really seen on the experiments. And in many situations, this deviation is not square root of T, is T in some other power. And this is really the whole mark of fractional calculus. This when we're talking about deviation, T in some other power, that's what we're calling anomalous diffusion. And that's what actually this fractional differential equation describes. Uh, well, uh, let me then uh, possibly say some general words about sort of excitement in, in scientists, in science. Mm, you know, I was always a big fan of, of hiking in the mountains. Uh, you possibly ask me why I'm talking about it. Well, several uh, years ago, I met in, in mountains, I met, uh, I met a specialist in speleology. And we just discussed with him about the difference, hiking in the mountains and um, going into the caves. And then it was became clear to me that uh, these are really two models of the scientific attitude to the research. So some scientists are mountaineers, meaning that they permanently pushing themselves to jump higher, 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 as quickly as possible, as high as possible. During this procedure, they may somehow over, did not notice some gap with the jump, jump over, did not notice it. They cannot notice some nice thing which like in the, in the earth, just possibly two centimeter under, under their leg. And the other people, they are speleologists, they go deep in some well, so squeezing through the mud, yeah? But eventually they find some diamonds, you know, some minerals hidden there inside. So both these sites, of course, are very important for science. And general science has this, basically these two trends as a mountaineer and a um, speleologist, but with some of them, the dominant is one or another. So for me, the dominant is mountaineering. I'm really trying to climb high, high, high and see as much as possible, big picture, big views around as much as possible. And fractional calculus really gives you this possibility because fractional calculus really connects lots and lots of different science, both in mathematics and in geometry, algebra, analysis, and of course, mainly now in probabilities, which is the most remarkable connection about which I already mentioned. And together with this uh, mathematical somehow links, yeah, there is quite a lot of application, links with application. And this also again, quite exciting because, and but uh, about particular application, I suppose you will have additional questions. So I think I stop here and give a word to you, Lalia. I think that when a, when a subject is growing so much at some point, it's good that one stops and one puts together because the, as we said, the, the subject has a lot of interdisciplinary areas, even in mathematics and also in applied. So it's good to put all the people working on this topic together so that they exchange and they see where there are the problems. Because at some, if we, you don't do this type of programs, everybody is working independently at each field. So it's very important that people interact and communicate to get higher as facilities together and not uh, only in an independent way. In 2022 is to, to do this program under COVID situation. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is one of the main challenges that we are facing actually. And this is the main, it's a, it's a pity, but it's, these are the main discussions. Do we do it online? Do we do it presential? So uh, nowadays this has become a challenge. But I think we're doing good because, uh, because uh, in, we hope that in March and April, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, participants uh, that are going to do a presential. So that we're going to be in the INI. And, and so most of the talks will be presential. And, they, and, and actually they will be always hybrid. So those that are presential, they will always be uh, in Zoom as well. So this means that people from the United States or from Asia that cannot uh, still travel will be able to follow. So I think that this, this was the main challenge, unfortunately, and, and I think we're doing good. Uh, even if now we have started mostly online, we hope that in March and April, there will be a big part uh, that is going to be presential. This, of course, definitely, this is somehow concrete challenge coming from this particular situation, <laughs> but some more general challenge, which also face many um, scientists and specifically mathematicians, is really to link theory 
with some practical issue. So this is really central challenge, which also applies to the fractional calculus. As we mentioned, there are very deep theoretical development, mathematical, interesting, beautiful points about calculus, fractional calculus. And there are people doing with some concrete things, which really, ex they really exploit this anomalous diffusion in various connections. So to bring this thing together, I think this is really one of the keys. And of course, the situation with Kavik made this story more complicated for us. But still, this is something which I see as also very, very strong challenge and very important even for the future development. If we try to establish at least some sort of links with more applied people, that will be already a great success. Well, here there's no doubt that this, uh, as we have, have commented before, uh, that the, this field has a lot of applications uh, in biology, in physics, in, uh, in, in finance, and actually uh, in, the, in the three workshops that we organize, we also plan uh, every workshop has its uh, uh, application part. And uh, one is more on optimal control, the other is more in hydrodynamics or more in physics, and the other is more in in, uh, in stochastic, in the stochastic part. And the three fields have uh, a lot of applications. So, um, so I think that uh, they, they're going to appear a lot in the workshops and also in the talks and in the discussions. Yeah, maybe I add sort of a couple of words. So just in this, in the same direction. So what we have in physics, yeah, in physics, we have precisely this anomalous diffusion. So that's the point. And now this thing appears also in biology and there's something which I think very important to stress. So it turns out that all, all really all transport phenomena in cells in biological, they are all given, they are all governed, governed by this anomalous diffusion. So the fractional calculus is actually the calculus for biology for all the process actually, which are going in our cells. Why? Because you see classical diffusion, Einstein diffusion, is basically a particle put in some sort of clear uh, medium like water. But all the medium in biology, they all some kind of porous media. Yeah? So there are some small holes of different scales. So this precisely implies that we have this fractional equation porous media, anomalous diffusion. Another point, which I also think very worth stressing is the application to various kind of ecology because all the sort of contamination of water, contamination of air, yeah, propagation of waste in again, in, in cliffs in earth, yeah, all these processes, they are governed by this anomalous diffusion and therefore by the fractional equation. Therefore, this application really, it's uh, difficult to, you know, overestimate yeah, the uh, sense and uh, not the sense and really the applicability, the perspective of the application of this whole story. Well, yes, definitely. Uh, if the the people that so far have worked more in only theoretical questions, they can learn from the empirical ones so that they can learn from an empirical point of view, which are the questions that are interesting to solve. And both, uh, and on the other side, the empirical ones, so people which are more applied, can learn from the, from the theoretical uh, questions. So I think that uh, I, we hope that after the, the program, uh, there the will be more in, after the interaction between these two communities, the research will be better, will work higher thanks to, thanks to the program.